you guys know, like BT dubs, do not be worried about me because I thought you maybe looked a little bit worried, but like I am so fine with the fact that Ray is coming tonight. I mean, like, even if he is coming, I don't know if he's coming. Like, I am ready to take this party by storm. Like, I am woman, hear me roar. You know what I mean? Like, I may be deflowered, but I am not devalued. Do you miss your hymen? Miss would definitely be the wrong word. Like, I wouldn't say that I miss it. I would just say that it kind of feels like something's missing. You know what I mean? Today's guest probably enters your home every Sunday night as awkward, adorable Shoshana Shapiro on the hit HBO series, Girls. Now she's getting ready to make her off-Broadway stage debut in the sure-to-be-controversial new play, Really, Really. Please welcome Sasha Mamet. Hello. Hi. How you doing? I'm good, thanks. How are Thank you? Thank you for coming in. Yeah, you're welcome. Let, let me just get this over with. Uh, your name, you have such a you have such an awesome name. Oh, thank Sasha. you. And I'm sure people mispronounce it all the time and then you, you always say it's so, like Sasha, like Sasha it, Fierce. Sasha Fierce, is, is that, that a is, nickname? That is not actually always what I say. It's good. what I'm going to say now, always. Um, <laughs> I normally say it's like Sasha with a Z and a surprising amount of people say, oh, Saza? <laughs> I'm like, no, but sure. Is, is there a, um, a story about your name? Um, kind of, a little bit. Um, my get parents. That over with? Yeah, sure. My <laughs> parents really liked. Uh, a, my mother liked a Z name, uh -huh. um, and uh, my dad's background is Russian Polish, and uh -huh. I had these sort of like adopted Polish grandparents, uh -huh. um, and they suggested just out of the blue Zasha, which is like the Russian Polish version of Sofia is Zofia. Um, so Zasha is sort of like a it's like a nickname a little bit. It's like calling Anne Annie. Okay. Um, but uh, yeah, and they, they liked it. Stuck. Well, you're the only Zasha on IMDb, so. Am I? There you go. Uh, better be. <laughs> now, you are in the midst of getting ready to make your stage debut mm -hmm. um, in this play, Really, Really, at MCC Theater, the Lucille Hortel. How, how, how's it going? How, how do you feel? This is, this is like your first time really doing this. It is, yeah. Uh, it's, uh, it's amazing. It's, it's a kind of like a dream come true. I've wanted to do theater for a very, very long time. Growing up in LA, there's not right. a lot of opportunity for right. that. Um, and I happened to luck out that everybody involved is just super exceptional. Uh -huh. um, I, I'm obsessed with our director and our writer is a David genius. Cromer. And yes, David Cromer and, and Paul Downs Caleza who wrote right. our wonderful play. Yes. And um, we have this exceptional cast and we're all just um, working our asses off, but we're having so much fun. We're yeah. just having so much fun. It, I read the play last night and wow. I mean, the, it, you know, they, they, the, the term page turner. I mean, like mm -hmm. I was on an iPad, I was a page scroller. I don't know. I was reading yeah, it. Yeah, a little just, like a page flipper. Page flipper. Yeah. It's a real, that real that page flipper. Yeah, totally. Um, <laughs> I, it's a new term. I mean, I just like read it all like in one bite. I was riveted. I had no idea it was oh, going to happen. Uh, it's really it's kind of shocking. It's really funny. It's really modern. It's really cool. Mm. What was your reaction when you got this and really sat down and turned um, the pages? Flip, flip, flip the, pages. the pages. I actually turned them. I, haven't, <laughs> I read a hard copy. Um, I, I loved it. I loved it immediately. I was so, um, yeah, I hadn't been surprised by by a piece of literature like that in so long. Right. Um, and I, I read, a, I read a lot of scripts, and, um, and just the way that I felt that it came to life was something that I hadn't experienced since I can't even remember. Just like um, the subtlety of the story, and yet uh, is so beautiful, but these characters are also so complicated and uh -huh. deep, and I think that um, it's such a fascinating period of life, especially the last semester of college, right. like this sort of like, fear and pressure that comes into play of going out into the world and making a life for yourself and what are you going to do with that. Yeah. Um, and just how how palpable that fear was. Um, I thought Paul just did a, a genius job with, with writing that, with how, how real that moment is for right. all of us. And you play a girl named Lee. I do. And, um, Th it's not really fair to reveal much about the plot because I think mm -mm. one of the pleasures of the play is sort of walking into it, not knowing much, and sort of uh, you know experiencing it and sort of not knowing. But you're you're Lee. There was a party the night before. There was a, a raver. 
as the kids in the place say, a, 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 rave, <laughs> rager. a rager, a rager, a rager, sorry, see? I'm not Generation Me. Hey, I'm, already, you know? I'm already like, it's a rager. A rager. And they call it the Tunnel of Love Party. Mm -hmm. And uh, and this girl, Lee. So talk, talk about her. Talk about this character. She's this sort of ambitious girl. Yeah, I play Lee, who is um, uh, amidst this group of very, very affluent, right. uh, young, very attractive beings <laughs> um, in their last semester of college. And... Um, I am the sort of, I mean, I guess a cliche way to put it is the, the one from the other side of the tracks. Right. You know, I don't, right. unlike everyone else, I don't come from wealth. I actually come from extreme poverty. Right. And I've um, sort of infiltrated this world. <laughs> and um, yeah, there's this, there's this big party and um, something happens. And so I guess what I've always sort of said when, in, in order to stay ambiguous but also give something about the play is that I always felt that it was very much about well, how humans react when they feel that their survival is threatened, hmm. um, which I think happens in this play. Mm -hmm. And not, not talking about life or death necessarily, but like what feels like life or death to these kids. Right, right. Like to them, when, they're, when their actual state of being is threatened. How do they react to the world around them, to each other? Um, and I think that sort of, and it takes place over, I think, three days. And yeah, um, yeah that, that's kind of what it's about to me. And you're gonna love it. <laughs> hope so, I hope everyone I'm will love it. I'm excited to see it come to life. It, it, it definitely jumps alive on the page. So uh, obviously your father's David Mamet, we all know, we all love David Mamet, playwright, screenwriter, director. Mm -hmm. um, did you've thought about doing theater? You said you've obviously been around theater your whole life. Did you like when you got to get a play like this? Do you did you send it to your dad? Like, what do you think of this? I I don't send it to my dad. No. No. Um, he's a, uh, you know, to to everyone else he is who he is, but to me he's just my father. Right. Right. You obviously filmed season two of Girls, which is mm -hmm. now on HBO. Mm -hmm. Already loving it. A few episodes in. Uh, the, you know, divergentized Shoshana. She's, she's, <laughs> on a, she's on a whole new path. She is. Um, taking so the world by storm. So did you know that you wanted to do a play during your downtime? Um, that was my goal. Yeah. But, um, you know, there's, there's really no way of controlling this industry or, yeah. or what, what you get from it necessarily. But, yeah, that, that was really, that was sort of what I set out to do. And I just happened to get lucky. This, this role of Lee... To me, it seems like the most ambitious role you've ever done uh, on screen or stage. Would, would you say that? I mean, it's a, it seems like a real monster of a part. So. I, yeah, I would. I yeah. would say that, um, which to me was actually the thing that called me to it the most. Um, you know, the, the thing I love the most about what I do is uh, being truly challenged. Like when I, when I read a part that scares me a little bit, yeah. um, that's when I'm, I know I would like truly get something incredible out of doing it. Yeah. And that's absolutely how I felt when I read this play. Yeah, um, yeah. and I, it's definitely a monster. I mean, I think the play is a little bit of a monster of a play, Yeah. Um, but that's the best kind. It's great that Lee is so different from Shoshana. Because so different, <laughs> yes. Shoshana is so awkward. And, uh -huh. and so, I mean, I think that's why people love her and she, people have really um, related to her. Is she a real departure from you? And do people confuse you now? I mean, I'm sure people now call you Shoshana on the street. That, oh, that, that absolutely. That type of thing happens. Oh, yeah. Um, no, everybody, I think, in the world thinks that I'm her. <laughs> um, and I could not be more different. Right, right. What, 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 is, uh, what do you have in common with her? We have this thing on set that we sort of decided that Shoshana is kind of the collective insecurity of the world uh -huh. that like everybody has that aspect uh -huh. to them whether like and to, to varying degrees N clearly not everybody is functioning at the level that she is right. um, but I think that there's something about her which is also maybe why people identify with her that like um, that kind of unabashed awkwardness yeah. exists in all of us yeah. and so I would say that that is that is what I identify most with in her. Uh huh. What I know that you 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 auditioned for it. You did a reading, and then um, they sort of turned it into a regular. It wasn't originally supposed to be a regular part. Mm -hmm. so clearly, you nailed that that moment. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that must have been a nice a nice 
thing to hear that. It, it was. It was pretty nice. Yeah. Um, what was what was it like meeting Lena Dunham? I, I know that you you didn't know her before the show. Mm -mm. Did you immediately click with her? And My first meeting with her, I was exceptionally ill and very, um, very much in a haze of cough syrup and NyQuil. A NyQuil haze, right? Yes. Um, so I don't really remember meeting her the first time. And then the next time I met her was on set for our pilot. Uh -huh. Um, and it was, it was wonderful. She's, uh, I mean, she's an amazing human. I love her dearly. Um, and it also was really incredible witnessing, I mean, at the time, I think she was 24. Right. And I just remember watching her, we were shooting a scene where I opened the door for Jemima, mm -hmm. and she was sitting on the stairs of this apartment building we were um, shooting in, wearing her Comtech and just like, kind of hunched down and, and I was looking at her in, in between a setup and I just, she just looked like someone who had been directing movies for 50 years. <laughs> like she right. was just so comfortable and so at home and clearly loved it so much. And I just knew in that moment that this was someone that, um, you know, it would be, it would be a work experience of a lifetime uh -huh. to, to work with her. What's it like finishing the entire season? So you've, you've, you already know the entire season two of Girls, mm -hmm. and then it slowly sort of gets rolled out to the world. What, what, do you sort of, do you remember where people are? Do you watch it each week, like each episode, or? I don't. You don't? Um, normally, like season one, I went into the cutting room early on and, and watched them all like in an afternoon. Uh -huh. I actually haven't seen, I've seen one through four. Okay. Like very rough cuts, um, and I don't. <laughs> Uh, you know, it all kind of bleeds into itself. Like we uh -huh. work, we work very hard and very long, and things change so constantly. Um, but there are things that I don't, like plot points I don't remember <laughs> um, that I'm reminded of when people watch it. Right. Um, so yeah, but it, it's always a funny experience. Uh, what we do shooting something and then waiting however many months mm -hmm. or years and then right. having it be in the world, because you're like, I did that already. I did that so long ago. Right, right. and now you're doing the exact opposite. Like every, yeah. every night, yeah, it's gonna be out there. How about the attention? How about the, the fashion shoots, the red carpet stuff? Do, uh, do you like all that? Is that sort of natural for you? Do you like getting dialed up? Do you like having people send you dresses? And No. <laughs> I don't. Does it go against your entire being? <laughs> um, I don't. I'm, I'm, I'm learning yeah. to uh, come to terms with it. And um, yeah, I, I take very deep breaths and I <laughs> remind myself that it is part of my job. Um, but I, it is not a part of my job that I particularly enjoy. You avoid the smile when you do paparazzi, don't you? I d it's not an avoidance. It is literally just that I, it is, it is the one thing that I cannot fake. Like the uh, idea of okay. like, like I watch these girls who like, <laughs> you know, we'll be like having a serious conversation and they'll walk out in front of a camera and they can just put on the smile that looks so real. Right. And I just can't force <laughs> myself to do it. I always ask, I plead with photographers to just make me laugh. Like, please just make me laugh. <laughs> um, it's something I inherited from my father. When you uh, point a camera at him, he can be smiling, the biggest smile of his life. And the minute a camera is on him, he goes like this. <laughs> so. so you're just keeping it real. It's genetic, I think. <laughs> Girls sort of put you into a, another uh, realm of fame, but you you have done a lot over the years, and I, I particularly loved uh, Joyce Ramsey on uh, Mad Men. Thank you. The cute little lesbian that tried to corrupt Peggy. We love, <laughs> <laughs> we, uh -huh. we love that. And you know, now I feel like, do you watch American Horror Story? I don't know. You know, because they had this. Uh, Sarah Paulson had this like '60s lesbian. I feel like you really like paved the path. Now there's all these like, uh -oh. yeah, there's like these period lesbians on TV now. I think you started. Hey, that. cool. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you credit for that. Oh, thanks. I'll, <laughs> I'll take it. Was that fun to do? Oh my god, so much fun. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. The, the costumes and the. I mean, what's it like being on that set? I mean, it just looks so real. Um, it's. I, I mean, it is so different from any other thing I've ever done. Yeah. Um, it's a very serious set. Uh, yeah, and they really, I mean, the costume designer, Janie Brown, is just like a genius, and everybody, the down to like, uh, you know, the props guys, it, it is so precise. Like, they, 
they don't miss anything. Mm. So it really is the they create that world. Yeah. Um, and I think that's what makes the show so rich. Do you want her to wander back on at some point? I they'd they'd cut off my limbs if I said anything. <laughs> okay, <laughs> we'll leave it at that. Um, that's that. Mad Mad Men is like you know that and Girls are like two of my favorite shows. What what are your like TV obsessions? I know you said you didn't watch TV much TV growing up. Uh uh-uh. uh. Um, and I really I you really still don't don't know except um. I love Downton Abbey. Ah, I'm obsessed okay. with Downton Abbey, but I'm not a like weekly watcher human. Right, you like to just watch. Yeah, it all I would just, like I stumbled upon Downton Abbey like, and I watched all of it in like two days. Yeah. Um, and then um, I totally by accident came across Nashville. Oh. And I'm I'm like totally hooked. Oh really? Oh absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Do you download the songs too and like? I don't download You're the You're just into the drama, the Nashville drama. I just, lo- but I love the songs. If both shows came to you, Downton Abbey and Nashville with these juicy roles, <gasps> which one would you pick? Oh, God. Oh, my God. That's like Sophie's choice. <laughs> I don't know, man. I mean, if, if I got to, if I got to play like some sort of strung out country star on Nashville, I'd probably have to go with that. <laughs> I might, but... I don't know. That sounds like fun. I think the writers should get on top of that. Right? <laughs> Would you sing? Would you do like a... I mean, like if they'd have me. <laughs> sure. Do you sing? Do you sing? I do. Really? Yeah, I have a band with my little sister. Oh, I didn't even know that. Yeah. Oh, wow. Cool. What's the band called? We're called the Cabin Sisters. Oh, awesome. I'm sorry. I don't know that. It's totally fine. We're not like very known to the world. Do you, do you hope to like... Do you, you do gigs and... You did um, it in LA? Or? Not, not yet. We're, uh, we both happen to, to be on television shows, so right. it's quite hard to, right. to promote music while doing that. Right. Right. Um, so we have an album that sort of sits on my computer, and maybe one day we'll be in the world. Oh, wow. We'll awesome. See. So now I have to ask this typical, because I'm a Broadway person, I've, that m- immediately makes me out to ask you if you would ever do a musical. Oh, my God. I, that is a very different land. Kind of singing. <laughs> that, yes. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I always say like I could do like I could do Joni Mitchell. I don't think that I could do uh, pull off a Broadway musical. <laughs> Speaking of uh, big Broadway singers, I know that I was looking on your cre- your first actual credit was when you were really young on Parallel Lives, that TV movie, right? Yes, and you were like it was. a little girl, and I noticed that one of your co-stars was Liza Minnelli. Shoot, yep. Did you get any moments with her as a little girl, or? Um, definitely. On set, there were interactions, but um, that was a. I was five. Yeah. I don't <laughs> really remember much. Um, yeah, I, it made me think about the the theater people that you must have sort of run into your entire life. Mm-hmm. I mean, did you have like great childhood memories of like Patty Lapone or <laughs> any I of mean, these these great people that? Yeah, they were all always around. Yeah. You know, like I grew up there. Um, I've, everyone my my father has worked with, you yeah. know, they're they're all his dear friends. So, yeah. and that's always what they were to me. And then as I got older, I was like, oh, well, these people are famous. That's interesting. <laughs> but do you, but it must have influenced uh, your interest in this world. I mean, just being around. I mean, you said really early on you knew that you wanted to do this. Yeah, um, I've never wanted to do anything else. Hmm. Um, I mean, it's hard Except, to wait, be a pirate? You, oh. said, you told the New York Times you would be a pirate. That, well, What's that about? Well, it's, that's <laughs> Is sort there a of big a, need for pirates? There's a, there is a huge, huge demand for pirates. Um, <laughs> I adore the ocean, uh-huh. like be it sort of beyond words. Um, I grew up on it. I, I love the sea. I, love, I grew up sailing. Um, and uh, that's sort of my way to combat. People often press to ask, what I would do if I didn't do this. And I really don't, I don't have a good answer. I, right. mean, I never had a plan B. Um, I, don't, I don't know, I think I'd sit in a room and stare at the walls if I didn't do this. Um, well, pi- yeah, pirate might be more upbeat than So I always that. just say, yeah, I always <laughs> say I'd, be, I'd be a pirate. <laughs> Go live my life on the high seas. Have you read all of your dad's plays? I have, yeah. Yeah, do you have a favorite? Hmm. I don't know, I'd have to think about that. Could you ever picture yourself collaborating with him, like doing one of his plays, or? I mean, sure. I yeah. I adore my father. Yeah. Um, we uh, I got I got lucky. I got a good family. Yeah. Um, and we um. 
we certainly love being around each other. So yeah, I mean, someday. You're about to turn, it's going to be your birthday, so happy birthday. Thank you're, you. You're going to turn 25. Yes. You're going to have a big rager for your birthday? I'm, I'm not going to have a big rager. I'm not a very big party person. No? I'm pretty quiet, low-key human. Um, I think I'm going to have a, well, th we'll have a show that night. So um, okay. I think that Monday I'm probably just going to have a small dinner. That sounds good, small dinner. Well, uh, thank you so much for coming. Yes, thank you I for having me. I think everyone really needs to check out Really Really at the Lucille Lortel Theater. Uh, I think it's going to be something really special. Hope I think you so. agree. Thank you, yes. <laughs> and it's playing through March 10th. Mm -hmm. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.